Guizhou's latest energy play isn't in its valleys or deserts. It's on the peaks. Engineers covered formerly barren ridges with solar panels, generating enough electricity for 2 million homes and answering Beijing's push for 1,200 gigawatts of wind and solar by 2030. It's a great switch from hydropower reliance, turning marginal land into a key part of China's clean energy surge. The dramatic transformation began back in 2015, when engineers first perched rows of solar panels on slopes that only months before had been all but ignored. These ridges, high above the fog-laden valleys and winding rivers, offered little for farmers. Rocky soil, erratic sunlight, and steep gradients made them unproductive and desolate. Early trials fed only small amounts of power to the grid, but the idea proved sound. Why not carpet these barren heights with mirror-like panels and turn them into giant sunlight catchers? By 2018, output had climbed to roughly 1.75 million kilowatts, enough to illuminate about 1,300 homes around the clock. Developers and local officials took notice. The murky peaks that once sat idle were suddenly booming with activity, as more than a dozen pilot projects cropped up across Guizhou's western counties. Villagers who once scrambled for every extra yuan from potatoes or maize found themselves riding the solar boom, earning land use fees and even wages as maintenance assistants. It was a win-win. Empty hillsides generated clean energy and rural incomes got a welcome boost. The big turning point arrived in 2020, when Guizhou's total installed capacity shot to 10 million kilowatts. That jump came courtesy of the Panjiang Photovoltaic Base, among other large developments, which stitched together multiple mountain spurs into one massive solar grid. Suddenly, Guizhou wasn't just tapping into its marginal lands. It was staking a claim in China's national clean energy race. In 2023, the province celebrated another milestone, 15 million kilowatts of solar capacity, with panels glinting back at the low clouds like fields of mirror shards. What drove this mountain makeover? Two forces converged. First, Guizhou had long leaned on hydropower, thanks to its rugged terrain and plentiful rivers. But a series of droughts in the early 2020s exposed the weakness of that strategy. Water levels plunged, turbines sputtered, and authorities scrambled to keep the lights on. Second, Beijing's ambitious targets to triple renewable energy capacity by 2030 unleashed a torrent of subsidies low interest loans, and policy support. Provinces scrambled to meet quotas, and Guizhou's otherwise underused hillsides offered an elegant solution. By converting rocky slopes into solar farms, the province could both shore up its power supply and tick the boxes on national green energy mandates. Once those panels went up, though, another challenge loomed, keeping them clean. Slope installations can't rely on the tractor-toed wash rigs you see in flat desert farms. Instead, Guizhou's teams have taken a two-pronged approach. During the rainy season, downpours do much of the heavy lifting, sweeping dust and bird droppings from the glass surfaces. But technicians still schedule targeted cleanings along the service tracks that circle the arrays. They use specialized misting nozzles that spray just enough water to loosen grime without causing erosion. Runoff is channeled into settling basins and filtered for reuse. In drier months, Workers climb the switchbacks armed with soft brushes and biodegradable soaps while drones hover, above to pinpoint stubborn stains or broken panels. This mix of nature's help and high-tech monitoring keeps efficiency high without wasting precious water. Beyond Guizhou's misty ridges, China has spearheaded colossal solar ventures from the 3.5 gigawatts Yurumki Desert Farm in Xinjiang, the world's largest grid-connected array, to the 1.5 gigawatts Tungo Desert Solar Park in Ningxia. These installations highlight solar power's critical role in diversifying China's energy mix, bolstering supply when dams run low and slashing carbon emissions on an epic scale. By weaving photovoltaic panels into landscapes as diverse as arid deserts and rugged mountains, China is not only building resilience into its grid but also stimulating local economies and accelerating its march toward carbon neutrality. However, not everyone views the shiny hills as progress. Conservation groups warn that carpeting slopes in metal and glass can fragment habitats, disturbing rare orchids and endemic insects that rely on undisturbed soil and native plants. They caution that even with erosion control mats under panel foundations, increased surface runoff could wash away seabeds and harm downstream water quality. 
Local residents have voiced quieter concerns, too. Some worry that the new service roads and heavy machinery could disrupt grazing routes or sacred sites. Authorities insist that thorough environmental impact assessments guided every phase and that native grasses and shrubs have been seeded between rows to stabilize soil and offer corridors for wildlife. Yet researchers still call for independent, long-term monitoring of plant and animal populations, water clarity, and slope stability to ensure the ecosystem stays healthy. Despite the pushback, the numbers speak volumes. By late 2023, Guizhou's solar farms were generating roughly 25 billion kilowatt hours a year, enough to power over 2 million homes and offset more than 20 million metric tons of carbon dioxide annually. That contribution helped China cement its lead in the global clean energy surge, accounting for nearly two-thirds of new solar and wind capacity worldwide that year. On the ground, the extra revenue has transformed villages, new schools, clinics, and paved roads have sprouted in places where even tractors once struggled. Agrivoltaic earnings have boosted per capita incomes by 5 to 10 percent in some of the province's poorest counties, funding everything from cell phone towers to water purification systems. Still challenges loom on the horizon. The very ruggedness that made Guizhou's slopes perfect for solar panels also complicates grid connections. High voltage lines must snake through gorges and forests, driving up costs and requiring delicate negotiations with landowners and forestry departments. Monsoon seasons bring weeks of thick clouds, slashing panel output by as much as 40% and challenging grid stability. Battery storage plants help smooth out short-term dips but existing facilities hold only a few gigawatt hours. Enough for surge protection, not long-term buffering against extended cloudy spells. And global supply chain hiccups, from silicon shortages to shipping delays, threaten to slow the rollout of planned expansions. In spite of that, planners are already charting the road ahead. Phase three of the project aims to add another five to eight million kilowatts by 2027, doubling Guizhou's capacity yet again. Floating solar pilots on nearby reservoirs are under consideration, offering the twin benefits of clean power and reduced evaporation. Researchers in Beijing are testing perovskite coatings that capture diffused light better, ideal for Guizhou's foggy peaks. And at the grassroots level, microgrid trials seek to let villages draw directly from local solar arrays during outages, sidestepping long transmission lines and boosting energy resilience. In the end, Guizhou's mountain solar saga shows how bold engineering and local buy-in can turn perceived disadvantages into global leadership. What were once barren, rocky ridges are now humming energy hubs that power homes, schools, and dreams, without bulldozing forests or draining rivers. The hills remain misty and green in the valleys, but along the sunlit slopes, they shimmer with panels that quietly harvest sunshine and illuminate a path toward a cleaner, more sustainable future.